So we are working on a way of being able to quickly predict if a molecule, a substrate, is going to do a substitution or elimination reaction. And we've looked at how the structure of the substrate affects the type of substitution and elimination reaction that it can do. Now what we want to be able to do is consider how the reactant, the nucleophile or the base, also plays a role in predicting which mechanism will take place. In the last video, we looked at the differences between nucleophiles and bases and looked at some examples of strong nucleophiles and strong bases. So let's think about how each of these different types of reagents can favor one mechanism or another. So let's imagine a scenario where we were trying to force one of these mechanisms over the other three. Like we wanted to set a reaction up that would only do E2 or it would only do SN1. Now keep in mind that that's really, really difficult to do for a lot of these substances and a lot of times we can't do it. But if we were attempting to force, we'll start with E1, if we were attempting to force the E1 reaction, let's think about what does E1 need or what does it want? what's going on in the E1 mechanism. So in our E1 mechanism, we have two carbons. They've got some stuff on them. The most important things to think about are the leaving group and the hydrogen. And for the E1 mechanism to work, the leaving group needs to fall off of the molecule first. That needs to be the first thing that happens. We need to avoid having anything attack the carbocation, or excuse me, attack the carbon, which means that we don't want any kind of strong nucleophiles in order to do E1. We also want to avoid having something attack the hydrogen, which would push the E2 pathway. So that means that we don't want a strong base either. If we want to force E1, we need something that uh, a reagent that won't attack our carbon with the leaving group because that would cause it to do SN2. Uh, we also want a reagent that won't attack our hydrogen that would cause it to do E2. We want a reagent that will wait for the leaving group to fall off before anything happens. And also, if we're trying to force E1, we want a reagent that is basically not nucleophilic so that once that carbocation is formed, whatever reagent we have, it's not going to be motivated to attack the carbocation. It will instead be motivated to go after the hydrogen. So for E1, we need a substance that is a weak nucleophile, and we also need something that is a weak base. We need something that's not going to attack, not when the molecule is still intact to, to force an SN2 or E2 pathway, and we also need something that's not going to attack the carbon of the carbocation when it is formed. What about for the E2 reaction? What if we wanted to force the E2 reaction and let's think about what that reaction is like. So if we're trying to do E2, we have a molecule that looks like this. What we want to have happen is something that goes after this hydrogen immediately. That needs to be the very first thing that happens. We don't want to give the leaving group a chance to fall off before reaction takes place because that would push us down an E1 or SN1 path. We also don't want anything that will accidentally attack the carbon holding the leaving group because that would give us an SN2 path. So if we want to force the E2 reaction, we need a strong base. And we need one that is also a weak nucleophile. We need something that will go here, but will not go here. So our rationale for this, again, is that we want to attack the hydrogen, but not the carbon. 
So what about if we want to do the SN1 path? And let's think about what is happening with SN1. So here, we have a molecule with a leaving group, and in order to do SN1, we want that leaving group just to fall off. So for this, again, we need a reagent that's weak. We need something that's not going to be attacking and giving the leaving group time to fall off. And once that leaving group does fall off, we need something that is a good nucleophile that will come in and go after this carbon. But it can't be too good of a nucleophile. If it's a strong nucleophile, it'll attack the carbon right away. Uh, and that will give us the SN2 path. So for the SN1, we need a weak base for sure, because we don't want anything going after a hydrogen. And also, we need a weak nucleophile. So that allows the leaving group to fall off. And then last but not least, for SN2, in the SN2 reaction, again, we have carbon with the leaving group, and our substance is attacking the carbon to get rid of the leaving group. So for the SN2 reaction, we need a strong nucleophile, something that will go after that carbon and initiate the loss of the leaving group. We don't want this thing to be a strong base because we want it to selectively attack the carbon not the hydrogen. So we need something that's a strong nucleophile, but a weak base.